welcome to Arise, Shine, for they let us come. I minister Michael Kernan, bringing to you a full gospel Christ teaching ministry, which is committed to the uncompromised word of God, allowing God's people to come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open the ears of the people that are listening to this broadcast so that they might understand with their heart and be converted, that they might go out in the highways and byways, hallelujah, Lord, with confidence, with assurance that what they're doing is the will of God. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. We're going to bring to you Psalms 73. We're going to look at Psalm 73. I went through Psalms the other day, and um, it just spoke to me. This is something that we got to get down into our heart. That, you know what? We're different than other people. God has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And this is a process. This doesn't just... Some people say they got a miraculous conversion. That's great. And I believe God is able to do that. But some of us need to go through a process. And this process seems a little daunting, especially when you're looking outward. We, we, uh, we, we're not supposed to look with our eyes, but see with our heart. And what I mean by, by seeing with our heart, we, we, we hear with our ears. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when I read this word and you hear what it says and you make an attempt to do it, we got to live this life. Hallelujah. And when we start to understand the word, this, this life flows. It's, it's, it's like blood pumping in our heart. Hallelujah. In the physical sense, it's like blood pumping in our heart. This life starts to flow through our spiritual heart, which is supposed to be, hallelujah, in the glory. And God is doing a work on it. Hallelujah. Taking out the bad that this world put in there and putting in himself. Thank you, Jesus. I've heard it said like this. When we let go of self, God will fill us with the spirit. We're going to Psalm 73. Truly, God had been good to Israel, even to such are as of a clean heart. Look up the word Israel. Israel means, if you go back in Genesis, the original word Israel given to Jacob means he struggled with God and prevailed. Struggled with God and prevailed. Hallelujah. We got to just let go and let God. That's something we got to truly grasp. If we're going to struggle, we're going to struggle with God. And you know what? We got to lose. Isn't that something? In the world, when you struggle, I was in sports, and uh, they, they had a sport called wrestling. And when you struggle against your opponent, you want to win. With God, you actually need to lose that battle. You got to just let go and let him have his way in your life. Truly, God is good to those that have struggled with God, hallelujah, and have prevailed. What have we prevailed with? Well, we've prevailed against this life, which has no life in it at all. It's just, it's just here to, to buffet us. Thank you, Jesus, to let us know, you know what? There's something wrong with this place. When my heart isn't right with God, you will know it. When your heart isn't right with God, you will know it. Hallelujah. I knew it when I first came out of sin. When I first came out of sin, I was walking in newness of life. I, I knew something. There was a change that took place. And as you keep going forward, you're struggling, but not against God now. You're struggling against the things of this world. you got to just turn loose the, the old man and walk in newness of life. That's, that's Luke 9 and 23. we got to turn loose the old man. Hallelujah. Follow Jesus. Turn loose the old man. And you know what? When things aren't convenient, that's called picking up your cross. When we look around and it seems like everyone else is prospering 
and we're not quite catching up like we used to, you know what? That's okay. That's okay. I know when I, when there, there comes a time when you start to walk in the Spirit, it doesn't seem like you're keeping pace with this world any longer. That's, you know what? That's a part of this new birth. You just got to get to the point where, you know what? You got to settle down. You got to relax. You got to take a few deep breaths and go, Lord, how is it between me and you? And he'll, he'll talk with you. He'll walk with you. Like the song says, and he'll let you know, you're my own. You're my own. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, God is good to Israel. God is good to those that have prevailed with God. Hallelujah. We've, we've come to a point where we just, low, you know, Lord, I don't care how this world seems to me any longer. I know what, how it is between me and you. And I know that you've been, you've been good to me. You've had your best interest in mind all along. And I got to get to a point in my walk with you where I just don't care what it seems like any longer. Thank you, Jesus. Even to such are as of a clean heart. A clean heart. That's what we need. A clean heart. Let's go to Psalms 51. We're going to go to Psalms 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So what we need is God to create a clean heart in us and renew a right spirit within us. There's times when we, like, you're going to see here coming up here real quick that we get caught up and looking at the prosperity of this world and not realizing that God is creating us a clean heart, greater riches than anything that this world can give us. You know, the devil's going to promise you gold and silver and all these other things, but God's creating in you a clean heart, and we need to have patience with that glorious work, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God showed me many years ago, I'm in him and he's in me. My heart is risen, and he's clothed my inner man's soul, with his radiant glory. So I'm going to be just like Adam in his likeness and in his image. I'm going to look just like God and I'm going to act like God. Hallelujah. And that's done through suffering many times. Oh, yeah, we got to suffer. Sometimes you don't even know what you're going through. You just feel this uncomfortableness. And all you can do is let out a, let out a, like a moan. And you're like, Lord, what am I going through? What, what's going on now, Lord? You know what? That's, that's when you need that personal relationship. And you get it through his word. You get it through his spirit. The spirit and the word are the, one and the same, but the written word and the spirit. The spirit will speak to you. Hallelujah. Number two, verse two. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. Here I was. I know the first verse is true. Let me break it down. The first verse is true. God, truly God is good to Israel. Those that have prevailed. Hallelujah. We prevailed with God. Hallelujah. We've come to a point where we go, you know what? Create in me a clean heart. Psalm 51 and 10. And renew a right spirit within me. No matter what I go through, Lord, be with me. And he'll get that job done. But you know what? We got to come to a point where we agree with verse 1 in spite of. The devil's going to try to make you think you can't get it done. They're preaching it from the pulpit. Oh, you don't got to live all that. You know what? That is your faith. That is your life. Yes, you do. That is your faith. That is your life. My faith is truly God is good to Israel. Some country in the Middle East? No. Israel are those that have prevailed with God and succeeded hallelujah we've overcome this world thank you jesus how by the blood of the lamb we've overcome that is revelation revelation i believe it's 12 and 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death meaning you know what 
no matter what it takes, I'm going to get it done. Because it is my life. The word of my testimony. I, I give you the word of my testimony every time I speak to you. I may, we, we are a living witness. We are a living epistle of the things that God has done to us. Our heart, man, hallelujah, is yearning for more and more of God. I'm not content. I want to be better at the end of the show than at the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. I can preach myself by reading the word of God happy. And I can be all alone. Matter of fact, there's no one in the sanctuary but me and you. I'm talking to a camera. I'm all alone, but yet I'm not alone because I have the spirit of the living God within me, nourishing me right now. I got to pray before I come up here. And let me know, you know what, Mike? The Holy Spirit is in control. He doesn't even want me to prepare a message anymore. I come up here with some scriptures, and I'm like, let's do this, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. I started looking outside of the promises of God into a lost and dying world and saying, well, how come, how, what, what, what? Forget that. Don't look at what they've got. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy before him, thank you, Jesus. That was what, Hebrews? That would be, I believe, Hebrews 12. And two, looking... Unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. God's plan of salvation. Jesus Christ is God's plan of salvation. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost was born of a woman, the Word of God. Whatever God said is spirit, and his spirit came, became flesh, and God put that all the sin of the world on that righteous body, the Lamb of God, and crucified it. And now, in faith in what God has done, everything, all the promises of God, my faith unlock everything this Bible tells me that is good and that he is working out. And we, we come to this word, and the spirit says it means this, it means that. Preach this. Go to the scripture. And I mean, it just, and it starts flooding. That's, that's those waters. Those, those, that's, that's that living water that flows out of your innermost being. And it comes out in the form of the anointing, which destroys the yoke of bondage. And that yoke of bondage is doubt against what God says. And this world will sow it into your heart if you can't read it. Hallelujah. And agree to it. Let's keep going. But as for me, he's testifying. See the word of his testimony here? My feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped. Here's why. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Bad place to be. You get to the point where, you know, there, there was a saying when I was in the world, somebody had the mightest touch. And I've seen them. Everything they do turns to gold. They go from here, they go, and you look at them from a distance, and you know what? They really, they went to the best colleges. I mean, their, their parents had money, their grand, they had old money. Oh yeah, they, they come from a long line of blue bloods. I mean, they had pedigrees, and they're smart, they speak several languages. I mean, I watch Jeopardy. I see some of these smart people, and it's impressive. And, 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 then, and then you hear, oh, yeah, they've been here, they've gone there. And, and you know what? That's not me. All of that stuff, none of that stuff is me. And you know what? You can get caught up in that and say, yeah, but, but you know what? I was, in, you know, my feet, my, my feet were starting to slip. I wasn't getting no traction with this word because I was looking outside the promises. I was looking outside the blessing of God. I'm not worried about what man has in the physical or even in the uh, 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 mental, his, his capacity to learn all these different things and 
several different languages and be very witty and funny. And I mean, everything they do seems to be perfect. And if you ask them, they will tell you, I am perfect. I have never made a mistake. And they mean it from the bottom of their heart. It's actually a bad place to be when you trust in self because you're not trusting in the living God. Are you really blessed when you trust in self? No, you're not. According to the word of God, you are not. And I have no other choice. I have no other avenue but to go right down that straight and narrow path. That straight and narrow path. Let's see. Let's, uh, when those scriptures come up, and I can find them, I need to go at Matthew 7 and 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13, enter ye in at the straight gate. That straight gate, by the way, is called Jesus, the body. Hallelujah. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. There is your blessed in this world. There is your Midas touched folk right there. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that which leads into life, and few and few there be that find it. So when you found a good thing, and I found that Jesus, the body of Christ, is our way home. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. That's St. John 14 and 6. Hallelujah. Psalms 73 and 3. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. It seems like everything they do, even when they mess up, they totally crash and burn. They'll get applauded. Everyone will throw them on their shoulder and parade them around town. I mean, it, and you're sitting there, and you, it doesn't seem like you can do no right. You know what? You will never please this world. As a child of God, it's going to be hard to please this world. There is no pleasing to this world when you are doing the will of God. They will not agree with you, no matter how good you do. Because, you know what? This world won't accept your offering. This world won't accept the fact that, you know what? Oh, oh, oh you think you're born, you think you're all that. No, I, I am but by the grace of God what I am. I am what I am but by the grace of God. And they don't understand that. They don't understand that the grace of God is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when I am in him and he's in me and I do those things that please him because I'm led by his spirit, Romans uh, 8 and 14, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When you do what God says, you will not please this world, but you will please your heavenly father. Because my righteousness is not of me, it's of him. If I could have worked out my righteousness through the law of Moses, all it really did was make me self-righteous in my own eyes. But when I do those things that please my heavenly father through his spirit, which speaks to me, through his word, that, you know, I go to this stuff daily. I read this like it is my nourishment. I read this stuff like it is my life because, you know what, nothing else works. I've come to a point where I've realized, you know what? Nothing else works in my life. And the world's going to see me as some kind of loser. But I know that I'm not. I'm right with my father. And I don't quite understand a lot of this stuff. But as I struggle, as I come forward, as, you know what? You, you start to, sometimes you grieve in the spirit. And he'll ask you to fast. He'll ask you to pray. You might not even be praying for yourself. You're praying for somebody else. You're praying for somebody else's deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. And as you come through these trials and tribulations, God will bring you into the fullness that he would have you to walk in. It comes with time. It comes with patience. It comes with much long-suffering. That's uh, with, with patience. That scripture would be Luke.
21 and 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Luke 21 and 19. In your patience. We need to be patient while God is doing that work on our heart. There's times when you go through things. Somebody comes up to you and buffet you. And, you know, they'll say something. I mean, right in the church house. They'll say some things, and, and they're not thinking. They, they're not thinking with the mind of Christ. They're trying to be funny and clever, and they, and they throw something in your face, and you're like, man, that, that wasn't right. That wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't needful, and it hurt. And you know what? That's okay. Be patient with them. God's still doing a work on that person. We got to be patient with that person while God does the work on them. Hallelujah. How are we, we going to show a lost and dying world when I'm out there boogering them up with my cleverness? No, no. We got to show them a work that God has already done in our heart. We are God's workmanship. Ephesians, Ephesians 2 and 10. Thank you, Jesus. We are God's workmanship. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. It seems like everything they do works. You know, and they're unbridled. They go out there and they do this and they do that and, you know, and, 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 and then you'll, what the b problem is is you'll start looking back sometimes to, to some of the things you used to do. And you used to get away with it. I know when I, before, before God called me, I was Teflon. It didn't seem like nothing. And after I got called, everything I did seemed to, you know, be adding up. It's not the case. We just got to be patient with God while he does this workmanship. Hallelujah. We got to be patient with him for a while. Hallelujah. And he's going to get the glory out of our lives. It says, put a zipper on that lip when you're going through this stuff. That's James 3 and 2. James St. James, actually it's James, after Hebrews, they say there is no perfect man, oh, we're, we're all flawed, well, James 3 and 2, for in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. I can take this body right here, and I can command it now. I can take this tongue and command it, and it will mind me. All I got to do is when something comes against me, zip it. Sometimes you might have to go for a walkabout and, and pray, Lord, I'm ready to, you know, start yipping. And he'll, he'll counsel you. Don't do that. Don't. You know, so when we keep a zipper on the lip, we're a perfect man, and God can do great things with us, and we can control this man, hallelujah, just by holding on to our tongue, holding on to that tongue in, in times of trials, in times of tribulations, in times of being put down by people right in the church house, calling themselves a Christian, and, 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 and you make a Christian-type statement, and they laugh at you, and you're like, well, that wasn't very, well, no, it wasn't. It wasn't very, you're, you're talking Jesus, and they're talking world, okay? You know what? God's still doing a work on that heart. I taught this a while back. Mercy rejoices against judgment. My mercy toward that ill, ill, ill-favored comment, that, 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 that uh, uh, cavalier comment, you know, they get out there, and they, they, they throw this in your face, and they laugh, and they walk away, and, and you know what? My my mercy toward them. I'm not going to run up there and start giving them a piece of my mind like a little chihuahua. You know, like a little lap dog. Yep, 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 yep. You know, that's, that's, not, that's not James 3 and 2. But you know what? I'm going to rejoice against God's judgment toward me now. He's going to look down there, and he's going to start to see these, the fruit of his spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 start to well up in my heart. And God's going to go, yes, you pass that test. And you know what? There's one right after it, and another, and another. He's, you know, through the furnace of affliction, God, God called it in the Old Testament, I'm going to purge you. And the word purge is quite an a, a, a austere word. He's literally stripping us of the old man and putting his attributes in place of them. That is called the new birth. 
When people mock the new birth, I can only marvel. You know, and, and they're doing it from the pulpit. Oh, what is the new birth? Well, the new birth is letting go and letting God. And you're going to see it way back as far as Genesis. Hallelujah. We got to give ourselves over to God so he can do that glorious work. Psalms 73. And I'm going to start at five now. They're not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Like I said, everything they do, Midas touch. And they'll sit there and they'll, they'll chew you up one side and down the other and everyone will laugh. They're a, real, they're a real bag of jokes. And everyone likes them. Everyone pats them on their back. And you're sitting there thinking, nobody pats me on the back. You know what? Go back to verse 1. Come back up to five, and you're going to start to see, you know what? You're no longer this world. You're Israel. Truly, God is good to Israel. God is good to those that have prevailed with him and succeeded. Hallelujah. We've just let go and got to the point where, Lord, I can't live this life without you. And hang on to Jesus. Don't worry what the world's doing. You know, God tells you to do something. Just do it. Every ounce of your fiber is trying to go the opposite way. Do what God said. And you're gonna, God's going to get the glory for your, out of your life. People are going to see a different in, difference in you. And you're going to go, wow, Lord. You're gonna, eventually, you're going to see a difference in you. Because you, you have memory of how the old man used to operate. Oh, yeah. I was a slick back in my early 20s. Oh, yeah, I, I, I could say the darndest things. And you know what? It just got to the point I became so miserable. I didn't want to be that man no more, but I didn't know it. I was too proud. Isn't that odd? I was too proud of who I was to repent for being a miserable sinner. We just got to come to a point where we come to an end of self. And we got to give ourselves to God. That's, that's, the, that's the gospel right there in a nutshell. We got to get to a point where we just give up to the old man and let go of the old man. We got to die to self. And it, it, sometimes it's not an easy walk. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them with a, with a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could desire. They are corrupt and speak Wickedly concerning oppression, they speak lawfully. They set their mouths against the heavens, and their tongue walk through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doeth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Here they are, doubting God the whole time. You know, they got these little cliches like God helps those that help themselves. You know, there's actually people that think that's scripture. God helps those that help themselves. And it says clearly that we're not sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So you go to the scripture and you got to go without doubt. You got to go without doubt. So if we go to 2 Corinthians I'll get there. I want to touch on this one. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. You see there? Why did the, why did the leather, letter kill? Because it made us self-righteous. It was weak through the flesh. You'll see that in Romans 8. It was weak through the flesh. It made us self-righteous. It, it, it gave us a reason to glory in what we have accomplished. Whereas when we just obey the Spirit, we can't claim any victory other than his victory, which was accomplished on the cross. 
This world, that don't make no kind of sense. But to a child of God, when you believe what it says, see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans, I believe, 14 and 17. Romans 14 and 17. Nope. Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where does faith come from? It comes from reading this word. It comes from hearing from God. Hallelujah. You get to a point where, you know what, nothing else is working. Good place to be. Doesn't seem like it at first. You know, you're going through a pity party. And, you know, there's a saying. I heard this many years ago on a, a Christian radio program. When we were 20, we were worried with what the world thought of us. But by the time we became 50, we realized that this world wasn't thinking about us at all. It doesn't care if you get saved. It really doesn't. They might want to part ways with you. They might not want to hang with you no more. I had several people tell me, you know, I, you know, you, that's fine. You know, this, don't bring it around here. You know, and, and you, got, you got to get to a point where you, you decide to go God's way. And you'll get there. Time I can become, when I finally heard that, I was pushing 50. And I thought, I know that's the truth. Because this, the, when, we, when I was 20, I was in the flesh. And I was always constantly worried. Well, what do people think of me? You know, you got to get over the old man. You got to get over what this world thinks of you. When you come out of darkness and into God's marvelous light, the world ain't thinking much about you at all. But yet God has you in the palm of his hand. And he's loving on you. But you know what? There's a process we got to go through, and you're going to see it here. Hallelujah. This is just one script. This is just one chapter among many. Hallelujah. And they say how Psalm 73 and 11, and they say, how doeth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? You know what? They, they're to the point where they're doubting the word of God, of course. And they're doing it from the pulpit. They're doubting. They're saying, oh, this doesn't mean that, and this don't mean this. And you know what? you got to read this stuff like it is your life. And God will give you the revelation of it. Sometimes through the school of hard knocks. This, all of this stuff here was picked up through the school of hard knocks. That means you're going to go out there sometime. That's picking up your cross daily, by the way. You want to know what picking up your cross daily is? That's the school of hard knocks. You go to the word. It says do this. You do it. And you know what? You get buffeted for it. You get, you get forsaken for it. People at work, they don't want to eat lunch with you. You know, I, I can remember several times, several people I shared my faith with at work. You know what? We had nothing in common from then on. They didn't want to say one word to me from then on. And that's just, you know what? I know a better way. But they didn't want to receive it. And it, it cost me that friendship, which was conditional, which was worldly. I, I, I had a good time speaking to these people. They weren't cussing. They weren't swearing. They weren't telling dirty jokes. They seem real clean cut. You know what? But, you know, that's, that's something that you just got to get to the point. That's picking up your cross daily. When you, when you share your faith with someone that you, really needs to hear it. They really need to hear it. There's, there's four people at this one company I worked for. Four people that needed the word of God. All four committed suicide. One company. Isn't that wild? Four people. And, 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 and you know what? They don't want to receive it. That's, that, they were under demonic attack. It says even the, your brethren that are in the world, they're suffering like afflictions. But without without. But without the grace of God backing them up, man, there's no life, only death. And when hope is crushed, you will let go. It's a bad place to be. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Who are they? The ungodly who prosper. Where? In this world. See, I'm prospering 
and the one to come. And God's doing that work in my heart. I can't do this show without him. I'm telling you, I pray before I come on here. I pray for you, but I pray for me before I get up here. And I start speaking to you because I got nothing to say without him. I got nothing without my Lord and Savior encouraging me, nourishing me. Hallelujah. Let me know. I'm with you. I'm with you. He, just before I get up here, I'm, I'm here. I'm with you. I can hear it. And you know what? It encourages me just enough. I don't think I'm some kind of fella. I'm not on TV to be seen. I'm, on here, to, I'm here to reach for souls for him because somebody reached for my soul. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody's still praying for me. Send your prayers out to this. You know what? This, 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 this uh, 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 TV pastor, hallelujah. I'm a, God called me to be a pastor, and he's not going to give me a church for some time to come. I'm your pastor, hallelujah, through this television station. That means I'm your shepherd. I'm leading you. I'm guiding you. Pray for me. I'm paying for this out of my own pocket. I'm not, ask, I'm, not, I'm not begging for money or nothing. I'm in four markets. It costs money. And you know what? That's okay. God's gonna, God has rewarded me. He's rewarded me already, but he's going to reward me that much more. This gift is going to grow, and it's going to be a marvel. He tell, tells me it's going to be a marvel. And people are going to flock to hear it, not see it, hear it. Remember, faith comes by hearing, not by seeing I can do all sorts of miracles. I can, do, you know, I can raise the dead. And I can, you know what? Your faith comes from hearing the anointed word of God, Isaiah 10 and 27. It destroys the yoke of bondage. It just crushes it. And all the devil can do is sit there and grin his teeth because he lost a soul that he thought he had. He lost that soul that he thought he had. And all he can do is grit, grit his teeth and say, oh, you think you're all that? Well, you know what? It's... It, your trials are coming, but that's okay. The word of God seen through all that, and he's, he's reaching for your soul. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in what? The things of this world. They increase in riches. Where? In the things of this world. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain, washed my hands in innocence, in, in innocency. He, see, he's back here, 13, after he's seen all of this stuff. He goes back to verse 2, saying, you know what? I've done all this stuff for, for Jesus. I'm getting right with God. S certainly, you know what? I've done this in vain. It, it seems like everything I've gone through is in vain. But you know what? God is reaching for your soul. You've tried it. It didn't work. And, 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 and you go back out in the world, it boogers you up again. You come back, you see me again, you go out in the world. Been there, done that, church hop, went from church to church to church to church until you found a message that you liked. You know what? This word will carve you up one side and down the other. It will fillet you. Yes, it will. It's trying to crucify you. The word of God, when it's truly doing his job, when the word of God, Jesus Christ, is truly doing his job, it is to crucify flesh. It doesn't feel comfortable at first. It does not feel comfortable at first. I used to sit right in one of those pews when my preacher preached like this, gritting my teeth, and I didn't know why. Because this man was being crucified. But nothing else will work. I'm telling you, been there, done that. Church hop, went here, went there, went in the world, out of the world, on this side of the fence, on that, you know, on the, sitting on the fence claiming to be a Christian, bad place to be. Bad place to be because there's a battle there. You want to be on this side. And you want to read the Word of God with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And our understanding is simply believing what God said and then going out and living it. There is your victory right there. And don't expect the devil to lay down and be your doormat. You're going to have to take this victory. Hallelujah. And we get it done through what? The blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto death. I don't care. Bring it. I'm, I'm already dead. 
All he can do is kill this body. I got to get to a point where, you know what? When I start struggling, that's okay. That makes, you know, when we struggle, it makes us stronger in the faith. We got to get to a point where we're standing straight up and just walking toward Jesus. Forget all the commotion. It's not easy at first. The right saying this, the left saying this, follow Jesus. The right saying this, the left saying this, follow Jesus. And this word will lead you home. Thank you, Jesus. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. It seems like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. I go here, you know what? And I go there. Sometimes it, you work hard just to get a smile out of people. And, and you'll find out, this is something, when you're going through this stuff, this is something I want you to understand. The joy of the Lord is our strength, okay? Nehemiah 8 and 10. The devil knows that. God knows that. The joy of the Lord. When you got joy in your heart, you're going to have a smile on your face. When people have a frown and you got a frown, you're not going to get a smile out of your, their face when you're frowning just as much as they're frowning. And, and you look like you've been sucking on a lemon, on something really bitter, some bitter herbs. And, and, and a lemon to boot, and maybe a lime mixed in there, I don't know, and, and some vinegar, you know, some apple cider vinegar, you know, the real, the real stuff, you know, I mean, just all this bitterness, and you're walking around like a prune all dried up, you're not going to get a smile, but when, when you're truly walking in victory, and you got a smile on your face, I've seen it, people walking around with a, you know, just, and, and you got a smile, and they look up, and next thing you know, they got a smile. You're not going to get a smile out of that sinner man when you, we, when you got a pruned face. Because, you know what? There's no victory in that frown. There's victory in your heart when the joy of the Lord is your strength. There's been times in the past. And, and I just went through a, a month and a half of fasting and praying, fasting and praying, come, going on, coming off, the, you know, going on, coming off. I mean, it, 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 it's been a real, and the, the, the more you do this, the, the, the tighter the devil is going to try to come against you. Oh, you think you're this. You think, you know what? Just go with what God tells you to do. There is a spiritual warfare, and as you walk in it, you're going to see it's very real indeed. This stuff becomes real. It's more real to me than it's ever been in my life. And I'm going to be 54 here in, in about two months. I know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, we love not our lives unto death. Why? Because there's nothing the devil can do against this body to bring death to my soul man, my inner man. Hallelujah. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. God's doing it for our good. And you, you learn, put a zipper on it. Put a zipper on it. Go through what God's bringing you through. And you got these people with authority in the church, smarting off. You know what? God's doing a work on that soul too. Pray for him. Pray for him. And if you're still bitter, afterward, it says forgive, you got to forgive. You got to come to a place, a, 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 a place of, of brokenness before God where, you know what? You just got to, you got to learn to forgive. It's, I, here's how my pastor says, it's a pressure relief valve. They got these pressure cookers. If those things ever get stuck, I guess uh, uh, people have tried it. I think one was Henry Ford. He, he stuck it and, and wanted to see what happened. Oh, yeah, it blew its lid. Probably, probably just about killed the poor kid. You know, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a bad place to be. But when that thing goes, that's forgiveness. When that thing goes inside you, there's forgiveness in your heart. You got to learn to forgive. That's patience. In your patience, what? Possess. You can control your tongue. You can control this man. You can control everything with your patience. So when you go to the word of God and you realize what it's saying is life and not death. The things of this world are death and not life. See, it's complete. The word of God is completely. It's opposite of the physical realm. It is supernatural, not superficial. This world is superficial, not supernatural. 
This is 180 degrees opposite of what the world is doing. And when you come here and read it in a carnal context, you're going to get a carnal doctrine. When you read it in a spiritual context, you're going to get, hallelujah, the gospel of Christ, which is, my friend, the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. Romans 1 and 16. If I say, 15, if I say I speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. What was he doing there? He was on his knees. He was on that altar. He was saying, Lord, I'm doubting your word. I need salvation. This is, this is a personal thing. When you're doubting God's word, when you're doubting God's intentions, the devil's got you. And you're in a bad place. You need to get those knees on that altar and get communion with the spirit of the living God. And you'll get to a point where, you know what, nothing else works. That's where I'm at. Nothing else God has done, uh, 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 um, um, that God has to put me through. Whatever God has to put me through, I just got to get to the point where, you know what, it's going to work it out itself out in the long run. Let me read this again. Until I went into the sanctuary, God, then understood I their end. I understood that, you know what, there's no salvation in what they're doing. Because the goodness of God, my knees on that altar, I'm, I, I, I'm envious of uh, evildoers, I, you know, and I, I'm doubting his word. I see doubt. Where was it? Um, 13. Psalm 73 and 13. That is doubt. I don't care how you add it up. That was a, you'll find out at the end here, a sanctified man of God praying to God with doubt in his heart. There's no life in that. You need salvation at that point. When you're doubting God's word, when you're doubting God's good intentions, which is Jesus Christ now, 13, that's doubt. You're, you're saying to the devil, I believe you, and I'm calling God a lie. There's no salvation in 13. You got to get to the point where the pity party goes away. And you're only going to get there when you got the joy of the Lord. Here, here's something I was going to bring up, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I um, went off in a different direction. But uh, uh, a while back, nothing was going right. I'm not seeking God in all my ways. I'm doing my own thing. Um, and, and God came to me, you know, nothing's going right. This ain't going right, that ain't going. And I'm just like, man, I'm fuming. You know, you got the little storm, storm cloud in, above your head there, you know, thinking, thinking these really... Bad thoughts like Charlie Brown, you know, you got these little storm clouds, <laughs> I guess you call them. And, and, and you got these really, you know, negative thoughts. And God, God spoke to me in that moment of, of, of self-pity. He said, praise me now. Praise me now. And you know what? I now know, and I, I'm, I, at the time I blew it off. I didn't want to hear it. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't listening. La, 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 la. You know what? When the same thing, when the same afflictions keep coming back over and over and over, you know what? You're going to have to want to start going, doing things God's way because nothing else will work. Again, a good place to be. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. So when you get to the point where you just sell out to what God is telling you and you can sit there when all hell is breaking loose all around you and be worshiping God, and people in the world are looking at you like, you're a strange lot. You should be, oh, oh, the, you know, you, oh, 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 they got the goods on you. It's a lie. It is a lie. And there's nothing you can do to prove it. But you know what? I know how it is between me and my Heavenly Father. And that's good enough for me. That's got to be. There is nothing else. There's nothing else I can trust. But my relationship with my Heavenly Father... And he works it out through his spirit. There's some give and take there. But we got to get to the point that we, we eventually, all the things we do, we want to go God's way. I've heard it said like this, and I like this. 
I just, I got this in the last couple of years as well. The road gets narrower all the time. The older you get, the narrower the road gets. That's that straight and narrow gate. It gets narrower all the time. And you get to the point. This is what God's looking for. I'm not over here on the left. I'm not over here on the fringes on the right. I'm right there following Jesus. And you don't got time to rock the boat. Trust me, the boat's going to be rocked, but not by you. That's called mercy rejoicing against judgment. And you're going to get to the point, just like Jesus, he's asleep in the back of the pillow. You know what? Raging all around you is this wild storm. And you can put your hands behind your back, or behind your neck, and kick your feet up on, a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on the lazy boy and just sit there and worship God in the comfort of your home, knowing all the goodness that he's done for you, why the world's out there going through their death throes. I don't care what Mr. Rich Guy is doing right now. I wish him well. God would that none would perish, but all come to repentance. He, God's not a God of exclusion. He's, in, he's included everybody. But it, he said in the scriptures, it's going to be hard for a rich man to come to me. So do, it's, not, it's not the size of the wallet. It's the content of the character. It's the content of the heart. And we've got to give our heart to him so he can put his goodness inside of it. That is the new birth. Thank you, Jesus. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou cast them down to destruction. They just don't know it yet. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one wakes, so, O Lord, when thou awake, thou shalt despise their image. And remember, their image is darkness, not light. Our light, our, our image, my clothing should be God's radiant glory. My inner man image should look like God's radiant glory. I should be shining. When the devil sees my inner man, he should see me shining. Hallelujah. Because that's what God showed me in the vision. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. Now, here's something. The old man. He was talking about all this different stuff. He's, he's, he's remembering back. Don't stay there. Don't stay there long. You got to learn to forgive yourself. There's things we've done in the past that you got to learn to forgive yourself or you will be brought under the condemnation of the devil. Bad place to be too. God forget about it. God has forgotten about it. When you've repented and God is converting you as a little children, see, we, we, we got a part to play in this. God's got a part to play in this. We got to let go. And let him have dominion. We call him Lord for a reason because he's lording over us at this point. Jesus said, why call me Lord and do not the things that I say? It's not going to work. It's not consistent with the word of God, I might add. 21. Thus, my heart was grieved and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee, my old man. You know, nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me up in thy right hand in spite of my mistakes, in spite of the things that I used to do. See, I don't do the things that I used to do because God's, I am now God's workmanship. I know better to go back that way. Matter of fact, my old man is a stench to my nostrils. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read this again. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was, a, as, I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me up by thy right hand. You see there? My sufficiency now is of God. This is Old Testament, but I'm reading it spiritually with the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And as I read this stuff, it just starts flooding out. And I can't help but get happy that, you know what? God has had, uh, 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 he's had patience with my ignorance. He's had patience with me boo-hooing my old man. He's had patience with me, you know what? 
coming to a point where, you know, you, you start getting envious. You, why, why? And he's like, uh-uh, don't go there. He'll, he'll say stuff like, don't go there. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holding me up by thy right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me where? To glory. You see the New Testament there? This is prophecy. Psalms is prophecy. This is the prophet speaking of the life to come, which is in Christ Jesus. After I've gone through all these afflictions, God's going to receive me up to glory because he's created in me a clean heart. And I've just let go and let God. Thank you, Jesus. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire but thee. This, this is someone that is finally sold out. I've, I've wet, the, I, I, I've, I've snotted, I've wet, I've wept all over the altar. I've tried everything else. And God has had patience with me during this whole process. And he will have it with you. But there's a walk. There's a talk. And there's a surrender. And there's a life. He said, be converted and, and come as little children. I don't walk around and pound myself on the chest like an 800-pound gorilla. I know without Jesus, without his sacrifice, without the infilling of his Holy Spirit, I have nothing. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And i got to leave you with my closing. Psalm 19, 12 through 14. Who can, who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. May the good Lord richly bless all your sincere efforts that you might lead a quiet and peaceful life, that you can go out there with confidence knowing full well, you know what? I got, I got nothing to be ashamed of because Jesus is in my heart. He's Lord of my life, and he's leading me home. And he's going to receive me up to glory. Full confidence. In the name of Jesus.